Hi, my name's Joseph. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of The Eclectic Philatelist. Once upon a time, long ago and far away, in a land not unlike our own, there lived a stamp collector. I suppose that's a, an intro that you can tell uh, what the subject is going to be here. The Once Upon a Time line is very well known as the opening to many stories of what are known as fairy tales or folk tales. And one of the most famous uh, books associated with fairy tales and folk tales uh, are collections of the stories put together by the Brothers Grimm. Now, I'm using this particular collection of the Brothers Grimm's fairy tales. Uh, there are many other collections out there in different publishers. And as you'll find in the intro here, that there have also been uh, quite a few revisions of the book of the Grimm's fairy tales. And we'll talk about that briefly in this video as well. Now, the stamps that I'll be showing are from all over the world. Uh, most of the stamps, of course, are from Germany because the Brothers Grimm were born in Germany and their whole idea of collecting folk tales and fairy tales was partly to preserve ancient uh, German literature and these tales that were quite often passed down orally but sometimes also written down. Now there's a lot to that uh, subject, an intro to the Brothers Grimm. So first we'll do a little bit of an overview of the Brothers Grimm, their history, and an overview of the, the tales that they compiled into their various editions. And then we'll take a look at the stamps from around the world and how the stamps portray uh, some of these various tales made famous by the Brothers Grimm collections. The Brothers Grimm, Jacob and Wilhelm, were uh, born in Germany, Jacob in 1785 and Wilhelm in 1786. Uh, throughout their life, their main goal was to collect and publish uh, folklore uh, stories that were passed down orally or some in written form, uh, what we would often call fairy tales nowadays. Uh, especially their interest was in German folk tales, although many of the tales had their origins in other countries, such as France. Now, they were very industrious when they were in school. When they were at university, they were known to study as much as 12 hours a day. And uh, Jacob and Wilhelm worked together their entire lives, although Wilhelm did suffer from uh, various health issues throughout his life and even missed a year of school due to scarlet fever. Now, the responsibility was kind of divided up between the two brothers. Jacob established the framework of the tales and maintained many of the iterations of the tales, kind of the editor from 1815 until his death. Uh, Wilhelm was responsible for editing and rewriting any of the tales. And yes, many of the tales uh, were rewritten. Uh, for various reasons. For example, uh, some of the, the pieces uh, were made to have more of a uh, rustic tone and anything that might have uh, detracted from that, Wilhelm edited out. He also improved the plots and sometimes incorporated more psychological motifs to the stories. So he added and many of the added to many of these stories and sometimes some of the stories even grew to be twice their original length in later published editions. Now the uh, first edition of the brothers that uh, came out in 1812 was actually not very popular. Uh, it didn't sell very well and I think part of the reason and when I was researching some of this and looking at some of the critiques of their, their books, uh, part of the reason was because the uh, critics didn't think these stories were appropriate for children. And that was uh, not a very good thing, especially because the title that the Brothers Grimm used was Children's and Household Tales. Uh, some critics thought these tales were too sexually explicit, some thought they were too dark, 
Uh, there seemed to be a lot of violence in them. And so in the subsequent editions, uh, Wilhelm especially edited out uh, a lot of things that were uh, criticized and changed the tales to make them more acceptable to a wider audience. Now, the first edition was published in 1812, the last in 1864. And the brothers published editions 17 different times. Uh, seven were the large edition that included all the tales, but also a lot of notes and annotations. And then they had 10 of the editions that were published were the small edition, which had only 50 tales and were rewritten to be very much more intended for a audience of children. Of course, after copyright lapsed in 1893, then just many, many different editions of children's and household tales were published. And it still continues to be published today. Their stories have been translated to more than 160 languages. There's in the US alone, 120 different editions. Now, some of the things that uh, were changed or edited by uh, the brothers, especially by Wilhelm. And you can find a lot of the information about the editing if you uh, do any research into the Brothers Grimm. I went to the local public library and found a lot of uh, texts that talked about their biography and the origin of the original stories and so forth. But uh, a couple of the things that Wilhelm uh, wanted to change in the stories were most people are familiar with stories of the, the fairy tales that feature an, an evil stepmother. And in the original stories, most often, that was not a stepmother, it was the mother. And the critics and Wilhelm decided that it would not be good for children to read tales where the evil character was the mother. So they changed it to be the stepmother. And uh, that was quite uh, common throughout the stories. Uh, one of the other things they changed was in uh, a very famous tale, A Little Red Riding Hood. And Little Red Riding Hood was originally uh, written well before the Brothers Grimm were even born. And it was written in France by uh, Charles Perrault. And I do have a book also of uh, his fairy tales that Charles Perrault wrote. And he wrote uh, Little Red Riding Hood. And the original story, the ending of it, goes like this. Little Red Riding Hood was in bed with the wolf and says to the wolf, my, what big teeth you have. The wolf turns to her and says, the better to eat you with, and then proceeds to do just that. He eats her, end of the tale. Now, <laughs> the uh, story that we know and the Disney story is obviously not that same ending. And so uh, Wilhelm did change that. Uh, to make it more uh, of a happy ending than the uh, nasty ending. Uh, some of the history of some of the stories can be quite fascinating. I would suggest to the uh, researching the history of Hansel and Gretel. Uh, that one can have a kind of a dark history to it and uh, goes back into the uh, early days of the German Republic when there were uh, uh, many instances of famine throughout the uh, the poor parts of the country and uh, well I'll let you do some research on your own in that but it can be kind of uh, fascinating fairy tales are not always uh, the same as what we see in the modern versions and modern adaptations so let's take a look at some of the stamps most of the stamps that I'm going to show are from Germany but some are from other countries as well and I'm only showing a few of the stamps from my collection. Uh, one of the things that I do recommend and one of the things that I did when I started this collection was to go to the American Topical Association website. And on that site you can find, if you're a member, the, uh, the checklists that they have for uh, topics. And there is a checklist for the Brothers Grimm. And so that's always a nice thing so you can start to keep track of what you've got and make a want list of items that you want in the future. So let's take a look at some of the stamps from the Brothers Grimm fairy tales. The first stamp we're going to take a look at is from Guyana and it's a 1997 stamp 
and it's a souvenir sheet that depicts the story Hansel and Gretel and this was produced uh, according to the catalog that I looked up as part of a, uh, a series to honor the 170th, 175th anniversary of the story of Hansel and Gretel. Um, there is some debate as to the 175th uh, you know, date there in the number, but it's quite an interesting uh, stamp. The, the graphics on this, the uh, story of Hansel and Gretel is depicted uh, quite well, I think. It's kind of some beautiful artwork here, and it's a, a nice addition to the collection. This one is not difficult to find at all, and I think it would be a nice one even to uh, display in some manner. You know, some collectors, some of the topical stamps that they collect, they don't just keep in albums. They may actually frame and uh, put up on the wall with other material associated with that topic. So uh, Hansel and Gretel, from Guyana 1997. The next stamp is from 1997. It's from St. Vincent and depicts the, the story Old Sultan. And this again is I think a beautiful example of the artwork that can be done uh, surrounding the stories of the, the Brothers Grimm here. This is another one that's not very difficult to find. Um, it's a very affordable stamp as well and I think it's a great addition to the collection and again one of these that uh, you may want to display and not just put away somewhere else. So the story depicted again is Old Sultan and St. Vincent 1997. The next one is also from St. Vincent and it's also 1997. It's part of the series of the previous stamp. And uh, this one has two titles, and sometimes with uh, Brothers Grimm Tales, um, it takes a little bit of uh, checking and research because in some of the editions around the world, the title of the stories may be a little bit different than what's in an edition that you have here. So this one in the uh, edition of the Brothers Grimm's Tales that I have, the story is uh, titled The Little Elves. Uh, but sometimes in other editions, and for this stamp, it was also known as the the Cobblers and Elves. So slightly different titles on some of these, but again, it's a little bit of research. You can find uh, the answer to that. Uh, this is, again, a very beautiful stamp. If you're collecting the, the Brothers Grimm's Tales and examples of the various stories. And again, I like these two from St. Vincent because they're showing uh, stories or tales that aren't the most well-known. They're not the most popular. You know, they're not uh, Walt Disney movie type things that everybody knows the entire story. So looking for those stamps that depict um, some of the stories that aren't quite as well-known, I think can really add to a collection. And again, this one's uh, not very difficult to find. Uh, I would suggest a, uh, this one is a great addition to a collection for the Brothers Grimm. Of course, Germany produced a number of stamps honoring the Brothers Grimm. And the next one we're going to show is from 1959. And this is a semi-postal stamp. Uh, this stamp you also saw in kind of the intro to this video here. And this is just one that was just to honor the Brothers Grimm and the stories and the contribution that they made to German history of folk tales and fairy tales. Uh, again, another stamp that's pretty easy to find, uh, 1959, and there were uh, many other semi-postals. Uh, I'll show some more uh, in a couple of minutes here, also from Germany that honored the stories and the brothers themselves. Uh, the next stamps are also from Germany, uh, also a semi-postal, uh, from 1963, and this is one of my famous, uh, my favorite uh, sets of stamps for the Brothers Grimm depicts the uh, wolf and the seven little goats. Uh, kind of a, uh, a well-known story. If, if you're not familiar with it, it's uh, worth a read. Uh, one of those stories that can be a little bit uh, gruesome to what happens to the wolf uh, in the story. But uh, the artwork on this one I think is gorgeous. Uh, I like that the, the stamps show the story and part of the fun of collecting the Brothers Grimm stamps um, 
are that many of the stamps show the story. And if you collect all the stamps in a series or in a, uh, a group that depict a particular story, you can make a nice display as well here. So 1963 Germany, semi-postal, The Wolf and the Seven Little Goats. Absolutely gorgeous little stamp. Next is another one of my absolute favorites. Uh, this is from 1979 from Paraguay. And this is a commemorative um, showing the entire story of Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, this is the more modern edition, the most uh, more modern edited version of the story, of course. But uh, again, this is great. I, I love the artwork on this set of stamps. And I love the fact that it can uh, be arranged to show the entire story. Um, please note on the, the previous stamp, The Wolf and the Seven Little Goats, uh, those stamps uh, were not arranged in the order of the story. I probably should have done that before I took that photo. But uh, here in the Little Red Riding Hood, uh, they're arranged by a denomination and it tells the story. And this set again is uh, a gorgeous set. It's beautiful, not hard to find either. And I think this one would make another great uh, display. So Paraguay 1979, Little Red Riding Hood. The next stamp I, I like a lot also, it's, uh, I like all of these, but I think some of these that I uh, chose for my collection, uh, this is another one that's one of my favorites. It's from Hungary, uh, 1985. It's a semi-postal. It was produced for the 200th birthday of Jacob Grimm. And again, it depicts Little Red Riding Hood. And I like the way the, the two characters uh, the little girl and the wolf are depicted on this stamp. Uh, this one is just, uh, I think, a different type of artwork from many of the other stamps for the Brothers Grimm collections. And uh, not hard to find again. None of these really are. And it's a, a beautiful little stamp. And uh, like I said, I really like the uh, depiction of the wolf on this one. So Little Red Riding Hood, Hungary, 1985. Next up, we go back to Germany in 2018, another semi-postal stamp. And uh, this set of four depicts the uh, fairly well-known story, The Frog Prince. And uh, this set of four, uh, I love. I mean, this, the artwork on this with the frogs is just fantastic. I think this is a, a wonderful uh, set of four stamps that you can find. Again, like the rest of these, like I've mentioned often before, they're not hard to find these stamps at all, but I think a, an excellent uh, part of a collection. Again, showing uh, one of the different stories. I mean, so often with Brothers Grimm stamps, you see Little Red Riding Hood or something like that. But I'm trying to show here that you can find other stories as well, and the Frog Prince is one of those, that there's only a few uh, other stamps that show that particular story. So great stamp, absolutely fantastic artwork on here with the frogs. Uh, the Frog Prince, a semi-postal from Germany, 2018. Next up is a more recent stamp, also from Germany. This was from 2022. So this is the, one of the newest stamps in the collection that I have so far. It's a semi-postal again, and uh, this has a number of different titles. Uh, I've seen this one in different resources titled The Hardship, also titled Spinning Straw into Gold, but most people I think uh, know the story of Rumpelstiltskin, and that's what's depicted in this particular uh, stamp. Uh, I'm not that big of a fan of the graphic on this one, and then one of the newer stamps, of course it has the uh, more digital code on the side of the stamp, and I'm not really a fan of that. but. Uh, good to add to the collection just to get one stamp that's depicting a different story. Again, in this case, uh, Rumpelstiltskin. So 2022 Germany, Rumpelstiltskin. Many of the, the stamps for the Brothers Grimm don't depict the stories, but are there to depict the authors themselves, the, the brothers Jacob and Wilhelm. And this is a commemorative, again from Germany, uh, 1985 to uh, commemorate the authors. I like this uh, stamp as well for how it depicts the authors and uh, some of the writing in German that's uh, on the stamp. 
So you can collect and group your collection for fairy tales like this by the stories, or you can depict uh, and group by the authors themselves. So this is the, uh, again, a, a nice one that I like, especially of how it depicts uh, Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm, Germany, 1985. The last one I'm going to show here is, again, a newer stamp. This is a set of three. It's from Germany 2021, another semi-postal. And again, this is another one that has many different uh, titles to it, depending upon the editions of the Brothers Grimm tales that you have. Some of the titles that I've seen is the uh, Reflection and Longing, Rebirth, and the Test from Frau Hall. Uh, the more popular title uh, that most people can find in the newer editions is Old Mother Frost. And again, it's nice to find the stamps that show the stories that are maybe not the most well-known of the Brothers Grimm stories. So this set of three, Germany 2021, Old Mother Frost. And so that's the Brothers Grimm fairy tales. Uh, there, again, there are many, many other stamps available. You can go to the ATA checklist again. That's a great source of the listings of the, the variations that are out there that you can find. If you collect uh, Brothers Grimm or fairy tales in general, I'd like to hear about that in the comments. Let me know what uh, types you collect and uh, you know, what type of uh, other ones, maybe other than the Brothers Grimm that you collect. I mentioned earlier at the start of this video, in the future, I'm going to be doing a, a video on Hans Christian Andersen and his tales. There's uh, quite a difference in his life from the Brothers Grimm and in the type of tales that he wrote. And, uh, Hans Christian Andersen was a writer of the fairy tales, uh, not just a collector of folk tales and an editor of existing tales. So stay tuned for that in the future. Um, one little quiz here for viewers, to, for the sharp eye viewers here, in the four stamps for the Frog Prince. Uh, two of the stamps may look identical and wondered why I had all four stamps on there instead of just three. Uh, there are two stamps on there that look identical for the Frog Prince stamps, but they are different. If you can spot the difference between the two stamps, uh, please leave uh, a note in the comments below. I'd be interesting to see if you uh, caught that and why I have two stamps that uh, look almost identical. So the Brothers Grimm, if you like this video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to the channel. That really helps uh, me out here to continue producing these things. And uh, stay tuned for uh, the next video. It'll probably be in a few weeks. Not sure exactly what that topic's going to be. I've got a, a number of things <laughs> in the works here. Again, please support the uh, American Topical Association. It's a great source of information for all topical collectors. And as always, keep collecting, collect what you like, and happy collecting.